Lucas Sabat running off on the plug. Oh, this is fucking hilarious. So, um, Lucas Sabat, a, a, a well known um, influencer and model and designer, and I would say, um, what's the thing that he has? And um, agency founder, right, with Hot Mess or Collective that he runs with his friend Noah. So he's kind of, you know, we're very well plugged into the scene at the moment. He's doing his thing and moving and shaking. But um, he was caught in a bit of hot water again. Um, or not, or he's caught in a bit, not again, but he was caught in a bit of hot water recently with this news that he supposedly didn't fulfill his end of the uh, agreement when it came to being um, paid or paid for his services and is influenced by um, Snapchat. Again, I'm not interested in, in the particulars of him personally as a person. I'm not necessarily one to talk about people's business. I just think it's interesting to talk about people who are in the kind of, you know, limelight and to kind of glean lessons that can be applied to our, you know, us regular civilians or us, you know, common folk. Because I think for the most part, you know, celebrities and people of some sort of notoriety are magnifying glasses for us as society overall and lessons can be learned from their kind of missteps that we can kind of apply in our own lives so let me get this story up on here and read the actual details so i don't kind of add the wrong info um so it looks like that um sued for not wearing snap spectacles where's the other article i think that was a one that had maybe a bit more information on it which was that one i think that might be this right the blast cool let's check this out and see if this is correct what i was saying these websites are all horrible though right they got a picture of Luca and Courtney Kardashian. I'm assuming because maybe they're dating, right? But it's got nothing to do with the actual article itself. Just like clickbait shit. That's like oh, annoying. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, it says here, what's the article say? So, um, yeah. Again, see, it starts off with Courtney, and she's got nothing to do with the story, right? It's just like again, just these white websites are just the fucking worst, man. Imagine going into journalism school and having to write this or having to put this together as a piece like what the fuck man like cause, anyway whatever um the uh, pr firm and consulting pr firm pr consulting filed a lawsuit against model lucas about obtained by the blast claiming that they signed him um to an influencer agreement and paid about forty five thousand dollars to post on social media during milan and paris fashion week the pr consulting says they approached about in September, which is currency um again talking about collections again twice. How do you mention the collections twice in an article about some guy not fulfilling his end of a Snapchat? It's like Jesus Christ. Um they agreed to pay him a total of sixty thousand dollars with an upfront payment of forty five <laughs> for photograph for photograph be photographing public with wearing the glasses. It's about was con contracted to do one regular post and free stories on his own Instagram account, but only completed one post and one story. He was also required to turn over an analytics for the campaign and allegedly did not it's about who has 1.7 million followers on instagram and only 370 and only 370 on twitter did not give back the 45,000 that he was given so the company wants 90,000 plus attorney fees to make it right court uh interesting so is not the only uh yeah yeah anyway so interesting right i think the interesting part of it is just how much money some of these guys are being able to generate right which is amazing which kind of goes back and it, which kind of lends itself to um lends itself weight back to gary v's kind of assertion right that attention is key right just being able to get eyes on what you're doing or eyes on you or specifically especially if you're a personal brand it's a key to everything especially if you're an influencer right um being able to garner attention of the right kind of attention for the most part is really the key to becoming successful because that attention is essentially its own currency right you can then monitor you can then you know you can slap whatever price tag you want on it and if a brand wants to be associated with you they pay that price you know what I mean and then they can garner that and they can hopefully garner that same attention and being somebody like a Lucas about who kind of for the most part does if you check his Instagram feed I went through some of it he's quite good at um picking and choose he quite he's quite good at choosing which brands to align himself with and it be quite and it be done in a tasteful way right he's very good at kind of sometimes if you don't know that he's an influencer you just went through his page you wouldn't be able to spot especially if you didn't click the caption you wouldn't be able to spot which piece was a branded piece of content especially if it's not like an outside of an edit editorial he does really want to kind of picking and choosing the right things because that again something i've i kind of have learned a lesson from the japanese the old school japanese heads right especially someone like hiroshi fujiwara 
who would often ask about collaboration would always say that he only works with companies or brands that he likes, right? If he doesn't like something, this is, this is during a time when Hiroshi Fujiwara's fragment, Thunderbolt was like a, you know, the, the, that was like instant money in the bank. He would like not want to cheapen his product just because of a quick check, right? He'd only uh, align himself with things that he supported or he liked. And if he didn't like it, then he wouldn't do it. Simple as that. And I think there's something to be learned from that. And there's some influencers that don't do that who just kind of, you know, um, hoard themselves out, for lack of a better term, right? They don't necessarily take any concern, necessarily take into consideration the long term damage that being associated with something shitty could do to your brand in the long run, right? Um, sort of diluting your brand, for, for lack of a better term. And he does quite a good job of doing it so far. But again, the money is nuts, right? What they get paid. So 60 grand and then 45 in upfront and the rest. When he fulfills, he's ended the bargain, which wasn't that much work, right? Considering how often he's photographed in fashion weeks, gets flown out by Dolce Gabbana and all these other people. So, like, you know, it wasn't in, I'm sure it wasn't something that he would require that much work. But I think if we're going back to the Gary Vaynerchuk thing, I think in general, um, if, if we are believing that the apocalypse, the apocalypse is going to come soon uh, and rain uh, bloody Mary on influencer marketing for the most part, and it won't be as easy for brands to uh, get influencers, it won't be as easy for influencers to get brands to kind of give them uh, silly amounts of money in order to kind of, you know, in order to kind of get people to click and buy the things that they want to sell. I think that end is coming very, very soon. I don't think companies are going to be able... I think Snapchat is already, you know, they're blowing money anyway, blowing money real fast. They're burning through a hell of a lot of cash. There's rumors out there in silica, in tech world that they're going to go under very soon. Um, so for them to essentially blow 90 grand or 60 or 90 grand, maybe close to 100, 100 grand, considering, you know, regarding how long this court case goes on, would they may be able to blow that much money on the kid who didn't necessarily take the deal serious or who kind of got a bit of cold feet and kind of decided to kind of you know change his mind mid campaign says a lot about that business um, model overall and says you know, if lucas about is doing that what is xyz person doing um and again i just think in general for people coming up and trying to do their thing and trying to move around and be an influencer and get their paper up too i think this should be a lesson learned too in order to kind of you know be professional about your job man I don't think, again, it's quite funny that he ran off on a plug, right? I think that I wrote down my notes, um, I guess, maybe to his friends and to that circle of group of people. It's quite hilarious, you know, like, you know, you kind of, you know, maybe it's it's a kind of weird way of sticking it to the man or some or some way or some, I don't know how they kind of interpret it. But I think, you know, it, it does show a bit of lack of professionalism. I think if you're coming up, I think one thing that you can do especially if you're a nobody or you're trying to make a name for yourself, is just be professional, right? It's to be on time, it's to be courteous, it's to kind of, you know, try and do your best work in order to kind of give yourself a bit more of a, a to give yourself a better reputation. Um, you hear a lot of people, or you hear some someone say, I don't know who said it, but whenever you think of an old Hollywood actor that you haven't seen in a while, um, actor and actress, or a director that you haven't seen a, a, move, a new movie of, right? Um, I remember someone saying along the lines of who works in the entertainment business, whenever you think where have X, Z person, X, Y, Z person been, it's usually not an, it's usually not a voluntarily, it's not, they're usually not voluntarily um, out of the business. It's usually the business has kind of pushed them out because they're dicks, because they don't necessarily um, get along well with people, because they're not necessarily good to work with, right? So the business has a good way of kind of like, you know, uh, passing that information on to a small world. Not many people, you know, for the people that are performing in front of camera, imagine how um, small it must be, a small group of people that operate uh, behind the camera and keeping that kind of ecosystem working or functioning. So the same would the same thing would be could be said for the marketing world. The same thing could be said for the influencer marketing world, especially when you get into the niche kind of influencer marketing world within the fashion community. Right. It's very, very small. So if you kind of, you know, if you're being this unprofessional and you're burning these kind of bridges with Snap, imagine what you're doing with a magazine. Imagine what you're doing with random blog. Imagine what you're doing with random retailer in this city, right? So um, those kind of things, doing them again and again, you know, you create a bit of a reputation. People start spreading news about you that you don't necessarily, um, I won't say trustworthy, but you don't necessarily someone people can count on. You might run off on a plug, um, wink, wink. It's not necessarily a good thing or something that you want to do. It's funny for the you know for your friends and for the group chat, but overall, in terms of your professional 
um, in terms of your career, quote unquote career prospects, or just in terms of just of your money as well. You're gonna hurt your money overall in the long run. But again, I think we're seeing the end, especially the end. I think we'll look back on it and see, like you know, this guy got paid nearly sixty thousand dollars. Well, he would have got paid sixty thousand dollars to post essentially like three bits of three bits of content on on Instagram. One front facing in terms of his story, and one that will only be seen. No one on his feed, and two that will be seen on his story, which is nuts. So it's 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 definitely the end is soon to come. It's a funny story for for what it is, I guess. Um, I'm I'm assuming they'll probably end up selling outside of court and kind of getting that all done. Um, I'm sure Luca won't be one. I don't know if he really would care about it. Um, for the most part, but yeah, it's a funny story just to see. But I think. I think the end is going to come sooner or later. So if you are considering getting involved in the whole influencer uh, hustle, then I probably think this is rather do it sooner rather than later because I'm sure they're going to pull the plug on that very, very soon. There's no way brands are going to be able to afford to be paying kids $60,000 only for them not to decide to turn around and do the thing mid-campaign. And that, the analytics thing as well is weird, isn't it, right? So that must mean there isn't um, Instagram, it doesn't allow Facebook, doesn't allow brands to pull data from people who they've kind of um, sponsored. So I'm guessing it's kind of clunky in monitoring how well your campaign is doing with set person. I guess, yeah, I guess the only way they have to do it is kind of through um, affiliate links, right? Um, so kind of like a, a a unique URL that you put in your bio or some shit, which is again not the best way to kind of really track how well ex uh, said person is kind of performing your campaign. So again, which is an another interesting part again because I think they were asking him to release the analytics of for how many people have been clicking the link for the spectacles, which haven't done that well. I don't think you know. God bless Luca. He's a cool dude, but. I don't think even Luca can get kids to buy slap spectacles. I just think that that shit's dead in the water for the most part. Especially because the app, right? Like, I've got little brothers and they're like, what? They're not even that young, right? They're in their mid-20s. And then, you know, for the most part, kids under, kids even younger than us are using Snapchat. But it's weird that they market the snap spectacles to older people, right? Like, I see snap spectacles being worn more by, like, you know... Um, I don't know, 25 and up like tech geeks than I do by, than I do um, seeing young kids who actually use Snapchat, use Warrior Spectacles. You don't really see that, right? Even think about it, like all those kind of funny, all those kind of funny videos that you see people post on YouTube, compilations of Snapchat, how people making videos where someone's fighting, whether it's a prank or whatever. You never see a kid filming that on a Snap Spectacle or something. It's always just someone recording it on their phone. So, you know, for sure, the actual users of the actual app have actually no need for spectacles so they're trying to push you know an app that's only been used by a, a small group of people um but they're trying to push the spectacles to a group of people who don't even use it anymore which is a very bizarre way of their business so again you know can't really blame luca for running off on a plug and the glass themselves are fucking shit they're garbage so you know if you can get away with it then fair play so let's